China has the economy that's growing, international travel without the quarantine, and why pharmacy technician is a skill to have now. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by C3.ai. C3.ai software enables organizations to use artificial intelligence at enterprise scale, solving previously unsolvable business problems. Learn more at C3.ai. I'm David Brancaccio. First, here's what happens to an economy in a country that contains the coronavirus. There is news today China's economy grew. 4.9% in its last quarter, a bit more slowly than expected, but it's still the only major world economy on track to grow this year, given pandemic. Here's Marketplace's China correspondent, Jennifer Pack. Chinese officials have been criticized for not stopping the spread of the COVID-19 virus sooner. But once they did act, the shutdown was near total in the worst hit city of Wuhan. Residents there weren't allowed to step outside of their front doors for weeks. Even in areas not heavily affected by the coronavirus, village officials ripped up roads to stop cars from leaving. Workers were furloughed or had salaries cut. They lived off their big savings until the second quarter when they were allowed back to work. Today, people in China are back out eating, traveling and shopping. Retail sales in September went up 3.3 percent. Now, the coronavirus still poses a threat. That's why China's government tracks its citizens through cell phones. The smallest outbreaks can trigger citywide lockdowns for weeks and mass testing. Measures that won't be easily replicated by countries like the U.S. In Shanghai, I'm Jennifer Pack for Marketplace. Looking to boost international travel, a global airline industry group says it's working on a system so passengers would not have to quarantine necessarily. Marketplace's Nova Safo joins us here. Nova, when can we get this? Well, that's the tough part, David, because there are a lot of hurdles to overcome first. There's a language barrier issue. Test results have to be understandable across borders. The industry has to be able to do a lot of tests each day. They're looking for a target price of $10 or less per test, and they need the test to be accurate and fast. So that's a tall order. So far, testing and air travel has been scattershot, different things being tried at different airports. But what the industry is aiming for is a common standard and the endorsement of the World Health Organization. Now, initial guidelines could be proposed by the end of this month by a U.N. agency, but there's a long road ahead, including getting tests that can match those guidelines. And so airlines getting deeper here into the COVID testing business, clearly present systems aren't meeting their perceived need. Right. They haven't been. Globally, there are about half as many flights now as there were a year ago. And international flights are worse off than domestic. That's according to the International Air Transport Association. And the hurdles airlines believe are the fear of sitting next to an infected passenger and the 14-day mandatory quarantines around the world. One industry survey found 83 percent of respondents would not travel if there's a quarantine in the arriving country. So testing, perhaps, could limit quarantines and ease fears, David. All right, Nova, thank you. There's a computer problem on European stock markets today with trading through the Euronext market halted for three hours this morning. Paris, Amsterdam, Brussels, Lisbon, Oslo. It's fixed now, they say, and the key index in Paris is up two-tenths percent. Here, the S&P future is up six-tenths of a percent. An update on the new federal pandemic relief money. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has set tomorrow, Tuesday, as deadline. If there is to be stimulus passed before Election Day, as a practical matter, she spoke of, quote, encouraging news, yet also of more work to be done. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance, offering Snapshot, a program that adjusts insurance rates based on safe driving habits. Now that's progressive. Learn more at Progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. And by the Henry Luce Foundation, which seeks to increase American understanding of East and Southeast Asia. Learn more at hluce.org. WNYC is supported by Columbia University SPS. This month, offering events with Columbia faculty and thought leaders in negotiations.